Hi, welcome. I'm Mastora, Deborah Grenard with the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism, and I have with me today one of our students, Layla. Welcome, Layla. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to have you here. Layla is, um, shall we say, she's one of our more mature graduate students and um, in our Masters of Divinity program. And Layla and I were talking the other day, and she has such a beautiful story. She has such a beautiful um, a calling in her heart and a way that she came to, to find this calling and feel this calling and, and the way that it led her to uh, on an exploration to where she is today that I just thought, you know, this is such a beautiful story. And I think both of us feel like, and, and our hope is, that um, there are, well, we do feel like there are other people in her mature category that could benefit from the story that she has to share. So we're excited to share it with you today. So I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit about Layla, and um, we'll just have a chat, and you can listen in. So in retrospect, Layla recognizes that she came into this world fascinated by human nature, her own and others. She's lived it and wondered about it from many different vantage points, daughter, mother, psychologist, spouse, supporter, and critic, citizen of the world. She's now in her mid-70s and notices a new urgency to making peace with oneself, with our life and our losses, and ultimately with our death. As a part of this quest, her heart's longing to know the divine has moved into a central position. Hence, she enrolled in the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism and is currently in our third year of the program. So again, welcome, Layla. So, Thank you. Can you start out just by um, telling people what it is that, what is that calling in your heart and how did that come about to, to draw you on this journey that you come on to? Well, I guess I'd start by saying it's it's mysterious to me. So I'll say what I can say about it and hope that you will feel, you the listeners will um, share the sense of mystery. Um, I've been on a spiritual path, I guess I'd say, for much of my adult life. First it was Quakerism and then it was 12-step and then it was Buddhism. And in each of those, I got a great deal of nourishment and, um, and a great deal of illumination of myself, kind of who I am and how I operate and what's important to me. Um, but when I hit a particular junction in my life, maybe four or five years ago, <clears throat> um, I was, I found myself looking for something more or something different. My husband was dying. I had just completed a, a fifth surgery that was very difficult. Um, my daughter and granddaughter who had been living with me moved out. Um, everything was in, in transition. Yeah. And fortunately, I was... Um, partnered with a business coach who had this path in her background and I found myself so um, dialed in to what she had to say about dying, about grieving, about joy, about um, self-understanding that I, I was sort of hanging on her words. She was 30 years younger than I was, mm -hmm. and it was quite spectacular to me that she touched me at a place I hadn't been touched. Mm -hmm. And I can only attribute my receptivity partly to the very uh, rapid transition I was in and partly to some kind of calling that, that just spoke to me and, and opened me up. And um, from there, it was a pretty direct path to enroll in the university. And, and <clears throat> here I am, a very happy camper as a third-year student. 
<clears throat> wow. Wow. So that's that's uh, um, quite a beginning and quite a, a, a uh, not an ending, but a, a new beginning, <laughs> I guess we'll say. Yeah. So um, now, can you just give us a little bit more detail? Maybe Maybe start with what you felt was missing in your life at that time and you know if you have any insights to like you know what what was happening what was missing for you in that time that you found you were well, seeking or yeah um, so in I'll put it first in terms of self um, knowledge because I, as my introduction indicates, I have a very strong background in psychology. Um, I'd almost say I got bored with the psychological approach, which by which I mean I, I reached some sense of limit. I had taken it for myself personally as far as it could take me. So there was that sense of being being still thirsty for guidance, but not of the strictly psychological realm. Mm -hmm. um, I also was grieving and, and actually accompanying my husband through his dying process. And there was something in me that was, um, I hadn't thought to use this word before, but was celebrating mm. um, him, our love, and his completion. And this was not language I ever would have used, mm. but um, but it fit. And and the whole experience of death as a returning, which is, as you know, central to Sufism was so alive for me. It was so welcome um, and so accurately fit my experience that I, I, I was, there I was, you know, that was what I needed. Um, hmm. I think that's as much as I can say about that's, that's yeah. deep. deep. <clears throat> So then when you found out about this path and um, in the school from the coach that you were working with, what were you expecting? What did you think you were going to find? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. Um, I was full, you know, in, in spite of what I've just said, I was full of guardedness and suspicion and caution and so I, I lived near the school, fortunately, so I could make several sort of stealth trips up there without committing myself to anything. And I could sort of look from out behind the trees at what was going on there. And I could <laughs> taste a little bit of this on, the, on a teleclass and a little bit of that if I dropped in at a, uh, you know, a, 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 a community activity. Um, it's hard to describe how other the whole Sufi thing seemed to me, but there was something in there that was like nectar to a honeybee, you know, I just couldn't stay away. So bit by bit, I overcame the various sort of cultural and um, sense of strangeness. And, and I, you know, I continue on that. There's still places where I, <gasps> I'm not sure about that, <laughs> but I, <laughs> But each, each little obstacle that I've passed over has deepened what's on the other side for me. So, wow. yeah, so it's been, I've been so blessed because not everyone has an easy time with this. And I wouldn't say my time has been easy, but it has been very clear that I want to keep going. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. So, um, Okay, so what, can you give us some examples of what you've experienced and how it's shown up in your life since embarking um, on this journey? <laughs> but I'll leave it wide open. You can, you know, you can talk about the school if you want to. You can talk about your life journey. Well, let me talk about 
um, myself as a woman in my mid 70s because I think that may be the create openings for our listeners. Um, we're all dealing in this, maybe, who knows, for some it starts maybe 10 years earlier, mm -hmm. um, but we're all dealing with losses. Losses of physical youth, losses of physical vigor, losses of cognitive dexterity, losses of friendships, losses of partners. Mm -hmm. it, it's everywhere. Ones, and right. if we only see it as a loss, then our worlds get smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm. And Sufism, for me, creates an opening. Yes, their losses, and yes, the grief is huge, mm -hmm. you know, and not, not to be diminished. In fact, in the grief is a lot of our spiritual, um, is where we know a lot of the spiritual blessings. And the loss of the physical being is not, is not um, a barrier. There's a connection possible. Um, people experience that connection differently. But so that was really important to me to have a framework for ex going through losses and, and, and not only with grief. Mm -hmm. with something more than that. Um, I think a lot of people, a lot of us reach our later years, we say, um, and may have a sort of wake-up moment of, whoops, uh, there's some, there's a perspective I could use here, but I don't have enough um, grounding in it something's missing. I'm wanting something, but I don't know where to turn, what to call it. I don't know, but I just feel a lack. And those are people that are particularly dear to my heart because I feel so blessed to have landed in a solution, um, even though I didn't know quite what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, I'll tell you a little story. I okay. convened a small group a month or so ago of that I called the Seekers Circle, and I just sent it out to an e-list of women in my roughly in my age bracket, maybe 50 and up, saying, "Are you someone who feels like you'd like a deeper or a, a spiritual dimension in your life, or maybe you'd like to even know what it is, but you don't know where to turn?" Um, come gather together on a Sunday evening and let's just talk about that. Let's see if I can help you find the end of the thread that you can then follow on your own to wherever it takes you. It mm. won't necessarily be Sufism, but it's just a next step. Yeah. And it was such a moving evening. You know, women came, one of them came who envied her son's Buddhist practice. She mm. envied what it was doing for him. Another woman came who had just retired and, and said, for the first time, I have time on my hands and I don't know what to do with it. And I'm curious what this spiritual thing might be. Mm -hmm. Another woman came and um, who had had a particular spiritual awakening and wanted to share it with us. So it was a mm -hmm. very touching um, responsiveness, you know, sort of thirst for... Um, which is why I'm so glad you're doing this, the, this series of interviews, because I think a lot of us are thirsty and we don't know where to look. We don't know what to call it. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. So this is beautiful what you're talking about that's coming through this group. I'm wondering if, you know, if I could just back up a little bit, where you started talking about going through that loss and having it not be, you know, something that, has your world keep getting smaller but actually you know an opening and you mentioned that you found the Sufism can you put that into uh, words of of like what you found in that what in you know just in kind of plain English if it's possible to to describe how that 
how your experience with that transformed through what you received and what you what you found. <clears throat> Let me see if I can. You're right; it's difficult to articulate. But first, somebody planting the seed. This this coach planted the seed that love and connection doesn't have to end at death. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know that sort of theoretically, mm -hmm. but she somehow helped me know that in my heart. Mm -hmm. And it, hearing that from her coincided with a sense I was having about my recently deceased husband that I was actually getting to know him. I was continuing to get, know him better after his death. It was a very startling, I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah. Um, so it's that sense of love, you know, we, we say it, and love doesn't end with death. We say it all the time, but to really experience that was quite remarkable. Um, I think that's the best way I can make it, give a sense of what I mean there. Yes, <clears throat> yes. So, how would you say that that um, it's transformed your life today? What's different for you now? How would you describe? I'm not afraid of death. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Not afraid of death. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I don't. I mean, um, I've had a number of losses of very close people, and I think that's helped in a way. It hasn't killed me. But I now have a, um, I have a platform for facing death that is a supportive and, and expansive platform. Mm -hmm. And what could be better than that, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And it includes you know, having five transplant surgeries. I've, I'm full of titanium, so I've lost body parts. But even that hasn't doesn't feel like a narrowing. Uh, it's miraculous. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. So then, um, I mean, here you are at, uh, I can say the actual number, 75 and three quarters. I know you're soon to be 76, which now the people who are looking at this video are thinking I'm lying, <laughs> I'm sure, because um, you're, well, you have a radiant spirit, and that has nothing to do with age, um, but you certainly uh, do not look 76, that you're, you know, that you're about to turn 76. So uh, you're doing, um, and, and I would never guess that you've had five surgeries and <laughs> from, from seeing your your face here. You're absolutely beautiful, radiant, and stunning. Um, so on the like on the day to day level in your life, that coming to that place of having that new platform and no longer being afraid of death or not not fearing death, how does that change your day to day? I mean, how oh. how's your life different? Wow. wow. Uh, how will I answer that? Um, huh. I mean, in a way, what you describe in me, the the radiance, is what's different. Um, I have a feeling of mysteries to be explored, um, joys to be known, losses to be encountered with, uh, without limitation. I mean, I don't know. A lot of my age peers, I'm sure people in the audience who are listening can identify with this, are getting smaller because they're scared. Right. You know, right. old age is coming in. The losses are coming in. And yikes, you know, buckle down, you know, close the, close the gates and hold on. And that's not 
necessary. You know, that's what our culture says about aging. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Not true. Not the only truth. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, so if you had uh, some words of wisdom to share with your uh, people who might identify with you, with the the people in you know in the age group that you described who are facing the losses on all of those levels that you described, what would you say to them? Can you give them some? Well, I guess I guess if if something that Deborah and I have said today touches your heart, grab it and follow it. Don't stop. Wherever you have to go, whoever you have to talk to, start shopping for churches, start going on radio talk shows, whatever you have to do to keep that curiosity, to nourish that curiosity, to take the next step. It's worth your life to do it. Just keep going. If there's any way I can help, Deborah can help, the university can help, wonderful. But fine, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't think it's too late. Keep going. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I like, greatly appreciate this time and your words of wisdom and your depth and, of course, your radiant beauty. So much Thank appreciated. You, yes. And I, I um, yeah, I'll just say it one more time. I love the way that you, that you phrased that. When you feel it, grab it, don't let go, follow it, don't stop. Yeah. 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 Thank you for, yeah, that's exactly the message I'd like people to take away. Beautiful. Okay, thank you so much. All right, and thank you for listening and watching. I'm Mastora Deborah Grenard with the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism. This is our third year student, Layla. And uh, if you uh, would like more information about the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism, you can find us at SufiUniversity.org. Thanks a bunch.